Welcome back to FTL. Today we're doing more of a tutorial style run with the basic ship, and we're about to move on to the next sector. I'm going to go to a hostile sector this time just to show off how they're a little bit different. We have a distress beacon right off the bat, and like I said, it's good to visit as many of those as you can, so let's check that out. Alright, we have a space station that's on fire, and we have a couple options here. We could send our crew in to try and help put out the fire, we could dock and try to rescue any survivors, or we could just leave. Now, if we send in our crew, there's a good chance that we might lose some of them in the fire, and I really don't want to lose anybody at this point. So, instead, I'm just going to try and dock and rescue anybody who might make it off. It's not the best option from, you know, maybe a humanitarian standpoint, but it's safer for us, and I think keeping my crew in one piece is more important. Uh, unfortunately, we don't rescue anybody. Uh, the space station explodes and we take a little bit of damage from that, but at least we got a little bit of scrap out of it. With that, we're ready to move on. We have another rebel ship. And this one immediately starts charging its FTL drive. If it jumps away before we can disable it and take it out, the Rebel fleet will get a big advance on our position, and it basically means we'll lose a whole bunch of time that we would otherwise have to spend in the sector. So it's very important to try and disable its engines or piloting as quickly as we can. It's also got a cloaker, which you can see here, which means that none of our weapons are charging for as long as it's cloaked. The good news is that it doesn't have any shields, so now that it's come out of cloak, we should be able to disable its piloting and prevent it from jumping away. There we go. With its piloting disabled, I'm actually going to target its cloaking unit, uh, because it's annoying and I would love for it to not be able to do that anymore. With that disabled, it can't cloak and it can't get away, so now we just have to finish it off. There's another distress beacon down here. And these guys have lost their navigation and they need us to lead them to their destination. There's no real reason to decline this. Uh, we can certainly help them out. And we get a scrap reward and a quest marker has been added to our map. You can see over here, uh, that is where they need us to lead them, so we need to make our way to that beacon. But there's no time limit on that, so we might as well visit a few other stops along the way. Here we come across another forward scout, just like the last one. Unfortunately, this guy has a shield, so I am going to have to disable that before I can take out his piloting. I'll use a missile launcher to get through his shields, and then I'll use my burst laser to uh, take him out. Actually, it occurs to me that what would be more efficient to do in this situation is to use the missile launcher just to disable his weapons. That way he won't be shooting missiles at me. The burst laser fires three shots, and he's only got one level of shielding, so I should be able to get a couple through and disable his piloting. And I can use my cloaker to dodge that missile when he fires it. Hit the cloak button, and it misses. Very nice. And both of our shots hit, so he can't get away and he can't shoot back. He repaired that weapons bay really quickly, which indicates to me that he has some system repair drones on board his ship. They're a drone type that you can have that basically sends a little robot out to automatically fix any damaged systems on your ship. And the enemy ships can have them too. So I'm going to spend another missile on this guy just to make sure his weapons stay out of commission. You can see they also got the cockpit fixed very quickly as well. So I'm going to have to keep targeting that with my burst laser and hopefully take him out before he can jump away. There we go.
We have a store right here, so let's visit that. I'm gonna fix up my ship, top off my fuel. I generally like to have 15 to 20 fuel at any given time, at least until the end of the game, just so I don't have to worry about running low. And we could afford to buy the crew teleporter now, but I think instead I'm going to spend that scrap on a weapons upgrade. I can only afford one for the time being, which isn't actually enough to get us much, but it's a step in the right direction. And at this point it's time to visit that quest and finish leading those guys that we saved earlier to their destination. And good news, they are very happy that we helped them out and they give us a nice reward. Now that gave us a whole bunch of scrap, which again, I'm immediately going to put into one more weapon upgrade, and I'm also going to buy one more unit of reactor power. Because now, if I turn off my missile launcher and remove one unit of power from my engines, I have enough to use my burst laser and the halberd beam. And this is a really, really good weapon combination. Uh, you can use the burst laser to cut through enemy shields, and then when they're down, if you time it right, you can just do huge amounts of damage to them with the halberd beam, which I'll show off in the next fight that we get into. These guys are offering us uh, a pretty decent exchange rate, uh, missiles for scrap, but well we do need missiles since we have that missile launcher, so I don't want to sell almost all of them. I'm just going to sell 10 of them. That way we'll have enough that I have a few to use and we can use that 30 scrap to buy another reactor upgrade. And now we can fully power our engines as well as use both of our nice weapons. And here we find ourselves in a hostile sector. This is a nearby sun, and periodically every 30 seconds or so, the sun will flare, which will start fires in random rooms on your ship, which is obviously bad news. Uh, we've also got a couple enemy boarders on board that we're going to have to fight off while we wait for our engines to charge and we can jump out of here. I'm going to send my mantis in to help out our pilot, and then I'll have my shield guy deal with this other dude over here. Alright, you can see our pilot, Notch, Minecraft reference. He's getting very low on health, so I'm going to send him over to the med bay right away. I don't need to worry about keeping my shields fully powered since we're not in ship to ship combat, so I'm going to use some of that reactor power to turn on the med bay instead. And you can see the sun flared, and we have a fire over here in this empty room. I'll just send my weapons bay guy in there to put out the fire. Now, when you have a fire on your ship, you can send crew members in to fight it, but they do take damage over time while they're putting it out. Uh, that is something to keep in mind. Alright, we've dealt with the enemy boarders, so I think now is time to try and jump out of here as quickly as I can. Even though there's a fire on this ship, I would much rather get out of this sector before another flare can hit. So I'm just going to jump away, and I'll let him deal with that fire at the next beacon that we land at. Which, fortunately for us, is a storm. So we know it won't be a fight. I'll have all the time I need to get all of my crew healed up and get that fire dealt with. Oh, and of course it has <laughs> two really nice augmentations up here. Uh, I can't actually afford either of them, which is a shame. But at the very least, I can get everybody healed up. notice that without anybody piloting our ship, our jump button was grayed out. Can't jump if you don't have somebody actually flying your ship. It's important to keep in mind. Alright, let's jump to the exit. And we get some more free stuff. Now we actually have enough that we could have gone back and bought that automated reloader augment, but it's been covered up by the rebel fleet, 
so we can't actually go back to that store. Instead, I think we're just going to have to move on. Thankfully, we have two friendly sectors ahead of us, and they're both the same thing, so it doesn't really matter which one we go to. Before I move on, I want to remember to turn my shields all the way back on. And <laughs> we have yet another store up here. Uh, judging by the path I can take through this sector, I should be able to visit these two beacons and then the store, and I think that's a good idea, because then hopefully we'll have some more scrap by the time we get there. Here we get a free weapon and some scrap. The healing burst is a bomb weapon, so it uses ammunition just like the missile launcher. But unlike the missile launcher, bomb weapons simply teleport directly into wherever you target them. So they ignore shields, and uh, I believe they have a slightly higher chance to hit. The healing burst heals friendly crew members. Um, it's useful for certain ship builds, but for the way I'm going to be playing through this game, I really don't need it. I don't use it very often, so I'll probably just sell that once we get up to that store. Here we have an empty sector, and finally we can visit the store. Okay, we have some crew to hire and some systems that we can buy first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and sell that crew teleporter, as I was saying, or sell that healing burst, rather, and I think now is probably a good time to go ahead and buy the crew teleporter. It appears down here in the corner of our ship, and I'm going to send our mantis over there for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the guy who was formerly in our engine room, and I'm going to have him hang out on the teleporter as well, and hopefully we'll be able to board some enemy ships. Since we have this extra Zoltan guy, he can take over engine room duties. We've got a couple distress beacons. We can't actually reach that one from this jump point, so I'm going to visit this one instead. Okay, this one is cool. Uh, as you've seen, every event that you come across has multiple options. Uh, but sometimes, if you have the right kind of crew, or the right systems, or the right upgrades on your ship, you'll get an extra blue option. These are almost always the best possible outcome. You'll get a better reward, a happier ending of that event, that sort of thing. So in this case, because we have a crew teleporter installed, we can actually rescue the guys on the ship that's trapped in an asteroid field. So we'll do that. And we rescue them, they're very happy, and they're offering us a reward if we take them to their home planet. We take them there, and we get 49 scrap. It's very nice. Here we're being offered the opportunity to do a little bit of mercenary work. This guy wants us to rescue a store that he runs. So we'll agree to do that, and that gives us another quest marker. You can see it's right next door, which is pretty handy. So we'll just go straight there. We find ourselves in a fight. They've sent over one guy on their teleporter. I'm not really too worried about that. Uh, this ship is a little bit more formidable though. It has a missile launcher and a laser, but more importantly it has two levels of shielding just like us. So this one's going to take a little bit more work to actually damage. While I wait for my weapons to charge, I'm going to go ahead and deal with the guy who boarded our ship. With him taken out, I'm going to send my injured guy over to get healed up. We've got an incoming missile, so I'm going to pause and cloak to dodge that. Alright. My crew member is healed, so I'm going to queue him up to go over to the crew teleporter. My weapons are fully charged. Now, I do plan on boarding the ship and trying to kill off their crew, but I want to make sure that he's not firing missiles into me the whole time I'm doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target my burst laser at his shields. When that fires, hopefully it'll take down the shields. Even if it doesn't damage them, it'll temporarily disable them. And this is kind of how you use beam weapons in this game. I've got the burst laser queued up to take down his shields. I'm going to click once with the beam weapon to select it, and you can see they fire in a path that's indicated by that red beam. And you can kind of angle it however you want, target it however you want. 
it's always a good option to try and get it to hit as many rooms as you can, because the more rooms you hit on the enemy ship, the more damage it will do. Uh, through a little bit of careful positioning, we can hit four rooms on the ship, so that's eight damage if it gets all the way through. And it'll disable his systems, including his weapons bay, his engine room, his shields, and his oxygen. So if this hits, it'll do a lot of damage. Hopefully he won't be able to be shooting missiles at me, and I'll be in a very good position to take out his crew. With the shields down, I immediately click to fire, and you can see it did a whole bunch of damage, but more importantly, it disabled that missile launcher. I'm going to detarget my weapons so I'm not shooting at the ship anymore. I'm going to power on my crew teleporter, and I'm going to send them over. You can have them teleport to any room on the ship. I generally like to send them into a 2x2 two two room, because that way they can't be outnumbered in fight. And we'll unpause and see how this goes. See, they've teleported in, and they're sending their crew in to fight them off. Right now it's a two-on-one fight, so that's going to be over pretty quickly. And we haven't won the fight yet, which means he's got another crew member somewhere trying to make repairs. Let's see where he is. Oh, there he is. He was in the shield room. There we go. We defeated the crew of that ship, and uh, that's good because you generally get much, much more scrap for killing off a ship's crew rather than completely disabling the ship outright. Uh, so crew teleporters are really, really good. Uh, they also, as you've seen, completely bypass shields, and they don't miss. So if you've got the ability to take out enemy crew, it's always a better option. Almost always. Anyhow. We successfully saved the space dock, we get some nice scrap, and it turns out that that space dock was also a store. So if we wanted to buy anything, we could. Uh, there's not too much here that I actually need. I'm going to go ahead and top off our fuel. And now is probably a good time to buy drone control, since I can afford it. When you buy drone control, it'll give you either a defense drone or a system repair drone free along with the controller. We got lucky and got a defense drone. I find these to be much more useful than the system repair drones. You can see that now we have another little icon over here for our drones. I'm going to make sure to bring my guys back aboard the ship before I jump away and send them over to heal up. I'm also going to spend the last of my scrap on one more reactor upgrade, just so I can have all of my systems powered at the same time. And once my boarding guy is healed up, we'll be ready to jump away. You can see I don't have power to run any drones along with all of my other systems yet, but that'll change pretty quickly. All right. So we've come across this event where a mantis teleports onto our ship and he's asking for protection. Uh, we can either side with him and fight off the people who are pursuing him, or we can offer him up in exchange for some scrap. Now with this event, there's a chance that the mantis is telling the truth, and then you get a free crew member and you have to fight off a ship. But there's also a chance that he's lying, in which case he will do some damage to your ship and then teleport away, and you'll find yourself in a fight. I would really like to have another mantis in my crew right now. So I'm going to side with him. I don't think there's really a wrong choice for this encounter, it just depends which you want more. And it turns out it was a trap. He did some damage and teleported out. Uh, and now we're fighting the ship. Thankfully, uh, we have a boarding party of our own. So I'm just going to immediately send them over to start fighting the crew of this ship. Oh, it's two Mantis. This is not going to go well. Um, you can see we are rapidly losing this fight, and really, I'm just going to have to hope that they can stay alive until I can bring them back on board my ship. And the best way to do this, I've found, is to lead the enemy crew on the wild goose chase. They can't do damage to your crew while they're moving through the rooms. So, by having them do this kind of Benny Hill chase scene through the enemy ship, I can keep them from taking damage while I wait for my teleporter to recharge. And now that it's recharged, I can simply bring my crew back on board and send them over to heal up. Now 
Now the nice part about this is that this enemy ship does not have a med bay, so the damage I've done to their crew is permanent. They're still hurt. So with my crew he healed up, I can actually send them back over and fight some more. You can see that Mantis was pretty badly wounded, so we should be able to take him out. And then this guy was fairly injured as well. So we've actually won that fight just by knowing when to run away from a losing battle. And we get a nice reward for that. It's important to note that that runaway strategy won't work if the enemy ship has upgraded doors like we do, because then we would have to break down a door to get out of that room. So you do always want to check and see what's on board the enemy ship. And in the interest of doing that, I think now is a good time to upgrade our sensors. For 25 scrap, we will now be able to see the interior of enemy ships, including what kind of crew they have on board, and, and what kind of drones they might have, that sort of thing. It's very handy, especially if you're doing a lot of boarding work. We have another store, and once again, there's an automated reloader, which is one of my favorite augmentations, and unfortunately we're just a little bit short on scrap. I'm going to take a bit of a risk here, and I don't actually recommend this unless you really know what you're doing with the game, but I really want that reloader, and I don't really plan on using the missile launcher much for the rest of this game. So I'm going to go ahead and sell it, because that'll give me enough scrap for the automated reloader, and to make some repairs to my ship. The automated reloader is an augment that gives you a 15% bonus to the cooldown time of your weapon, which is really handy. You want to be able to fire as quickly as you can and now my weapons will recharge significantly faster. I may end up regretting not having that missile launcher anymore, but hopefully we'll come across some weapons later on that'll make up for it. Man, there are just tons of stores in this sector, but we have no scrap, there's no real reason to visit that one just yet. Here we have another fuel for drone parts offer, and I don't really need it, so we're gonna skip that. And we don't really have anything else to do in this sector, so I think it's time to just move to the exit. Intelligent life forms on a nearby planet. Let's investigate it. Hmm, they're weird. Uh, let's try to communicate with them peacefully. Hey, good news! Uh, they decided to help us out, and because of that we get a nice reward and a free crew member. It's an Engie. Engi are great because they repair things 50% faster than the other races. Uh, they only deal 50% as much damage in combat, so you don't want to be using them in a fight, but they're very nice to have on board your ship for fixing systems. Alright, with that we are ready to move on to the next sector. And I think this is a good part to uh, cut things off as well, so I will catch you guys next time.